everybody and welcome to another Lion's Table. Let's take a moment to enter into the presence of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let God's word which is truth fill us and give us strength. Let us contemplate his great love for us, his sacrifice on the cross, his mercy, grace, and promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the word who was at the beginning, was with God and is God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life and is life, and that life was and is the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. John 1, verses 1 through 5. Dear brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, we are so happy for you to join us in this ark of God's word. For faith comes by hearing God's word. If anyone keeps his word, the love of God has been truly perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. 1 John 2, verse 5. We know there is no other God. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, verse 6. And now we're going to be reading from 1 Corinthians 1, starting at verse 18. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are headed for destruction, and in some translations it says, for those who are perishing. But we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. As the scriptures say, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligent. So where does this leave the philosophers, the scholars, and the world's brilliant debaters? God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish. Since God, in his wisdom, saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom, he used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. It is foolish to the Jews who ask for signs from heaven, and it's foolishness to the Greeks who seek human wisdom. So, when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended, and the Gentiles say it's all nonsense. Boy, doesn't that sound like we're here today. Continuing now from at verse 24. But to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. This foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans, and God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring nothing what the world considers important. As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. God has united you with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God, and he made us pure and holy, and he freed us from sin. Therefore, as the scriptures say, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. And continuing now, 1 Corinthians 2. From verse 1. When I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, and this is Paul speaking, <clears throat> I didn't use lofty words and impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. I came to you in weakness, timid and trembling, and my message and my preaching were very plain. Rather than using clever and per persuasive speeches, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. I did this so you would trust not in human wisdom, but in the power of God. Yet when I am among mature believers, I do speak with words of wisdom, but not the kind of wisdom that belongs to this world or to the rulers of this world who are soon forgotten. 
No, the wisdom we speak of is a, the mystery of God. His plan that was previously hidden, even though he made it for our ultimate glory before the world began. But the rulers of this world have not understood it. And if they had, they would not have crucified our glorious Lord. That is what the scriptures mean when they say, No eye has seen and no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Boy, that is so powerful. I just have to read it again. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. But it was to us that God revealed these things by his Spirit, for his Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit, and no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. When we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the Spirit, using the Spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths be from God's Spirit. It all sounds foolish to them, and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things, but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him? But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. And we encourage you, dear brothers and sisters, to continue reading in Corinthians. And Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 3, and I just want to read the first paragraph. And keep in mind... Today's message is the message of the cross, and Paul is still speaking. Dear brothers and sisters, when I was with you, I couldn't talk to you as I would to spiritual people. I had to talk as though you belonged to this world or as though you were infants in Christ. I had to feed you with milk, not with solid food, because you weren't ready for anything stronger. And you still aren't ready, for you are still controlled by your sinful nature. You are jealous of one another and quarrel with each other. Doesn't that prove you are controlled by your sinful nature? Aren't you living like people of the world? When one of you says, I am a follower of Paul, and another says, I follow Apollos, aren't you acting just like the people of the world? And we want you to keep this in mind, given the fact that this is an election year, because we tend to you know, grab on to the political leader that we think think is going to save us. But that is not true. Yes, indeed. Uh, no political party, philosophy, ideology, or individual is going to save the human race or save nations or save people. Uh, that is a human uh, fallacy that is baseless and will get us nowhere good. Uh, clearly, God has sent us our only Savior, and He is the one we should be turning to. Amen. And that is the message of the cross, that God's mercy has fallen on us when we didn't deserve it, and His wisdom, His wisdom is real wisdom, not that of the world. Well, thank you for joining us for this Lion's Table. We hope this has been a blessing to you. As always, we invite you to join us again next time. <music>